Jake Roberts hosts the snake pit with the world's heavyweight champion Hulk Hogan. Yeah, he did. Hogan just comes through this fucking set, a fake wall. Very tentatively. And he walks he in. He didn't trust this Jake. Flexes right in front of Jake's face. Well, Jake's talking about his python. Mm-hmm. Yes. Constantly. First of all, I want to mention, did any of you notice Jake, very, Jake was very <laughs> casually wearing handcuffs on one hand, waiting Why? to be cuffed to something? What was going on? Because everything this guy does is creepy. He wants to talk about his python. What do you think of my python, he asks Hulk. Hulk wants to talk, Hulk wants to talk about his two pythons. And uh, Jake says, well, show me your pythons. So Hulk says some spiel about how since you called me out, I'll just cover you up and steps in front of Jake and flexes the pythons. And he... They're talking about fear, and Hulk declares the Hulkamaniacs fear no man, woman, or beast. And so the wrap-up, and usually these things just end. Someone's still talking, and they just cut it. And Jake asks him, would you ever turn your back on a man you were afraid of? Hulk thinks about it. He looks Jake in the eye and says, no. Turns his back and walks away. That was so awesome. And Jake's, boy, was Jake furious Jake is, irate. that he turned his back on him. Yes. Yeah, Jake does these snake pits, and whenever he's done with the heels, he, you know, they cackle about something diabolical. But then he'll have some big baby face on, like Hillbilly Jim or Hogan, and they show him up, and he gets so mad. That was the coolest and smoothest thing I've ever seen Hulk Hogan do. It was up there. It was up there. Tito Santana and Pedro Morales versus Ken Glover and Steve Lombardi. Yeah. So Tito, obviously, was a school teacher. And he uh, apparently just retired last year. Oh, congratulations. Last wow. year was his last year as a, as a high school teacher. And he's he's another one of those guys that, you know, great career. He made his money. He got out, stayed healthy, you know, kept doing indies forever. Had a nice life. Did the uh, high school teacher deal. I mean, can't say enough good things about Tito Santana. He, he's one of the success stories in pro wrestling. Yes. Yeah. I love how the success stories in wrestling are, you got the fuck out and got a real job you, somewhere else. You got out with your money and your health. Yeah. It's like when you're when you're young, the whole idea is, I wish I could quit my real job and just be a fucking wrestler. Mm. And then, uh, you know, you do that for a while, and then it's like, I wish I could quit this fucking wrestling thing and just get a real job and be happy. And, uh, you know, for all you out there listening, just skip the wrestling part. Just get a real job <laughs> and be happy. Make life easy for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Tito and Pedro, you have... One from Mexico, one from Puerto Rico. They do an inset promo in Spanish. And then Gorilla declares, once these two Latins get that hot blood flowing, they are literally unbeatable. That probably was uh, more racist than that uh, Machines promo. I mean, it does definitely stereotype. their blood is not hot. It's definitely a stereotype. It's just yeah. not. I'm, I'm Hispanic. My blood is not hot. <laughs> no. And I was, frankly, I was more offended by the fact they were literally unbeatable. Yeah, I don't think that's true. I think you could beat them. I uh, know. I've never seen him beaten. So they had a very basic match. I had like two dozen backdrops in it. Gorilla is again distracted, listing all the people who have slammed bought John Studd, and Heenan has not paid the $15,000, which is funny because he's listing men. He included both Haku and King Tonga. So I guess he's owed 30000 Pedro pinned Glover with a backbreaker. The best part is, can anybody tell me who this referee is? He, he looked like Bruno San Martino, except much smaller and skinnier. And uh, Tito and Pedro win, and the referee is standing between them. And, you know, of course, you know, in wrestling nowadays, it's like you win, and then the referee holds up your arm, and then the ring announcer does the rigmarole or whatever. But here it's like they win the match, they stand up, the referee's between them, the referee has each of their wrists, but they all stand there staring at the camera, waiting for the official announcement. And they're standing there, and they're waiting, and they're waiting. And finally, the ring announcer says, the winners of this tag team contest, Tito Santana and Pedro Morales. And then the referee raises both their hands up. They waited. They waited for the official announcement just to make sure. You never know. And uh, he raises their hands, and then they put their hands down, they turn to leave, and this re- this ref goes, slaps Tito on the ass. Oh, I Good missed, game, brother. I missed that entirely. I fucking died. Yeah. Right of the sombrero he wears there? <laughs> Why were you slapping him on the ass? You're supposed to be an unbiased referee. What the fuck are you doing? It's almost like they were friends. God. 
That was the best part of the show. <laughs> I just was dying. Now, the best part's coming up here in two segments. But first, we have Moondog Spot versus Toma. Actually, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I was so wrong to say that. <laughs> I was so mistaken. Moondog Spot versus Toma of the Islanders. We have Billy Graham in the desert with a stifling light coming down on his bronze body. You know my favorite new wrestler is? Is this Moondog Spot? The Moondogs are much better than I remembered. Mm-hmm. Well, it's... it's uh, you know, I'm watching Randy Savage, and goddamn, that guy's a great worker. But he took some move... Maybe it was a backdrop or something. I don't know what it was. But he did the deal where you kind of rotate a little bit, and it's kind of a rolling bump. That's the only bumps Ric Flair ever did. I did them all the time. Lance yelled at me for it. But, hey, I feel great, brother. But anyway, not this fucking moon dog. No. This moon dog. Like, you shoot the guy in, and you'd give him, like, a chop. And instead of just, like, bumping, he would take the chop, yeah. And then he would jump high in the air, bam, and take this giant bump. I'm like, what in the fuck are you doing in this match? He, this he match. Would like, he would, like, stop running. Yes, and he would and jump he would as jump high as he could on this hard-ass motherfucking yes, ring. Yes, yes. And every time, it didn't matter what he was hit with, he would stop, leap, <laughs> and take this giant bump. I was like, oh, my God. Why... How? I mean, God. So we've already talked about this match for longer than it went. Yeah. Moondog Rex just runs in, interferes with the DQ. Haku makes the save. I did like Haku's. How in fast his, Haku was? Why well, Haku's? He was in his prime, all right. Yeah, but he's he's uh, in like sweatpants or track pants. And Bobby Heenan is complaining about him being in the ring in street clothes when the Moondogs are out there in denim. <laughs> yeah. What I what I did like about this is, and granted, the guy that did the run-in, did touch somebody. But, I mean, man, that brother went underneath the bottom rope and, and grabbed that guy, and the ref threw that thing out so fast. Yeah. Because nowadays, it's a stupid rule that I rant about every time. Well, you can have 90 guys in the ring, and, you know, one guy can be beating up nine attackers, and that's okay until one of the attackers actually hits him. Then it's a DQ. It's fucking stupid. It would never happen in the UFC. You could never have someone jump the fucking cage. And as long as, you know, is one guy was beating up him, it's fine. Even if the other guy attacks the other guy in the middle of the beating, that would never happen. It's stupid. As soon as someone enters the ring, it's over. And that's what they did here. There was no, like, that guy slid under the ropes, and the ref's like, it's, it's done. Rang the bell. We actually see this in other sports when streakers, for example, hit the right field in the NFL. The play stops. Yeah. Before. Stop. There's a fucking foreign object. Somebody kill that lunatic. A living foreign object yeah. has been entered into the playing field. Yes. Stop. Yes. They do it in AEW, too. They, they do it in most wrestling like, promotions. Don't, don't have that rule. That rule is stupid. Yeah. It's like the aforementioned Billy Jack Kane's hitting the ring with that chainsaw, but as long as he doesn't cut anybody with it. <laughs> but he didn't. Yeah. And then the main event promo. What a main event. Wow. Ken Resnick interviews Sika and, more importantly, <laughs> the wizard. You know what, though? Sika was a very important part of this. Sure. Standing sure. there in the background with his eyes wide. Bug eyed. And I swear to God, I was watching the end of this show on that couch right there, and Paisley was sitting on the other side of the couch watching Danny Go or some wacky thing on YouTube. And <laughs> she just hears. <laughs> She just hears Ayakea screaming. I am a liar! And she looks over. And I'm laughing. I'm like, Daddy, what are you watching? I'm like, I'm watching this maniac here on wrestling. And she looks at him for a second. And she goes, Why is his brain so big? Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. And I said, what? That's what I thought when I saw. I said, That's actually not his brain, it's wrinkles. Sure. And she goes, Oh. Mm. It looks like his brain, yeah. mm-hmm. and it actually does. Yes. I mean, it looks yeah. exactly like his brain. But you know, she watched the entire promo. She was transfixed. Of course, she was by this fucking wild man, and it was another insane promo. I he took me to the thirty third level of communication. Actual line. That's what he what? said. Mm-hmm. The thirty third level of communication. What level am I at? 
Mm, Am I higher or lower? Third at best. I don't even fucking (laughs) know. I'm going to say lower just to be safe. I don't know what this fucking maniac's talking about, but he's the greatest promo in all of WWE in the 80s I've seen so far. Nobody touches him. And and he does this all while he's completely hunched over at the hip. He's like like almost bowing, and the the guy's interviewing from down. uh, It's ridiculous. So I didn't even know what Reza's question was. It doesn't matter. But the wizard's response, this very first word was, they! And I was bursting out laughing before we even got to the why in, in they. I, as far as, the! I was already cackling. He went to Uganda and found the big headhunter, the slayer of the big cats, Kamala. The grand wizard told to complete the 33rd level of communication. The original cannibals were Polynesians, which I don't know is true. Uh, Sika is a complete throwback. And he's talking about Sika. Zoom into this man. And it's funny because he does resemble like most fathers do. He does look like Roman. He looks like his son. But the characters are so completely different. His eyes are bugging out. He's being all wacky. And they're trying to make him scary, but he's actually like totally cartoony and silly. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Paisley was not scared at all. No. Not no. one bit. She will have no nightmares tonight. But as mentioned, Sean's out of town. I'm watching his dogs for the week. And I was over at his place watching this. And the more, the more the wizard bellowed. The more these dogs start to growl. Of course. He's over with the dogs. And he's uh, talking about the rare white Bengal tiger, Hulk Hogan. Here is eternity and oblivity for you, Hulk Hogan. Yeah, there's another one. Paisley was like, what's oblivity, Daddy? I was like, I don't have any idea. Still don't know. <laughs> eternity and oblivity. All I know is this is done. All I can think was this is pro wrestling. Oh, it sure is. God damn, this is great. It sure is. I don't want to watch anything modern. No. I, I no. don't even want to watch WrestleMania this weekend. I want to watch more of the Wizard. King Curtis Ikea. Yes. Next week, King Kong Bunny and Big John Studd in action. Hillbilly Jim, Paul Orndorff, and Coco Beware. And we close with our special musical review. Yes, Always a highlight. Always a highlight. This show was yes. awesome. It was first, fun. first couple of shows of Challenge were pretty rough. And the next, next two or three weeks got a lot better. This show was awesome. I, uh... I love this show. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. I look forward to it every week. It's easy to watch. 40 minutes. I mean, they pack so much into that 40 minutes. It is a busy 40 minutes. I I do have to hit pause a lot. Well, yeah. But you're never bored. bored Nothing is ever long enough for you to get bored. And, you know, there's all sorts of different characters and all sorts of different matches. And you see these people, you're like, oh, my God, it's Mick fucking Foley. Oh, my Lord. Is that Roman Reigns' dad eating a raw fish? It's Randy Orton's uncle. <laughs> yeah, that's that's, Rand, that's the original Randall Orton? Yeah. Are you kidding me? And that guy took 25 years off and then wrestled? Yeah. Awesome. Love it. We had several former multiple-time world champions. Not mentioned, but uh, Peyton Morales and Harley Race were, in fact, world champions over and over again. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.